The glow of light coming from the bodies of the two witches had disappeared along with them, turning the forest pitch black. Silence crawled on the ground and lingered in the frigid air for a while before Ethan finally moved. Let's go, he said, and Lucas nodded. Are we going to leave the kingdom tonight as planned? Lucas asked as they left the forest. The prince didn't answer immediately. When they landed on the castle's watchtower, Ethan halted. He stood there, looking over the city light. He let his midnight hair and his dark coat dance with the wind before he uttered an answer. No. We'll stay for a while. May I ask why? No. Then how long is the while you're talking about? Ethan glanced back at the red-haired man behind him. A hundred years certainly changed you a lot. But it seemed it did nothing about your nosiness, Lucas. If that's a compliment, then thank you, your highness. In a heartbeat, Lucas caught a dagger that suddenly whooshed in the air like a stray bullet aimed at his heart. If you want my compliment, then stop engaging with any form of fight against the witches. Especially the silver-haired ones. Even if you find them in the vampire castle's premise. The red-haired man tilted his head slightly as he stared at the prince's dagger he caught. Okay, I understand. But may I know why? Lucas couldn't even finish his question because the prince he was talking to was already gone. Scratching his head, Lucas sighed and followed after Ethan's trails. As soon as the two witches arrived in the Black Forest, Freya hastily headed to the Crystal Cavern. She had planned to speak with Zack the moment they were back, but at that moment, Freya had to deal with the chaos in her head. She needed to calm down and settle her mind first and foremost, or else Zack would also begin to question what was going on with her and what it was that she had seen. However, before Freya could start the chant to open the secret door towards the crystal cavern, Zack caught her wrist. Let go, Zack. We will talk once I step out. Just give me a moment, please, she said. And gladly, even though Zack was hesitant, he let go of her hand. When the door opened, Zack just stood there, silently watching Freya's back as the secret door closed behind her. Zack sunk on the ground and put his hands on his head as if he suddenly had a sudden throbbing headache. Inside the cavern, Freya sat on the majestic crystal throne. Her hands were on the armrests while she rested her head on the backrest. She had her eyes closed, and her silver hair was glowing around her. She looked like a moon goddess carved or preserved in the crystallized throne. The memories that witch queens received from their predecessor weren't something that could flow like a river in the current host's mind any time. They were akin to water inside a pipe. If the host doesn't turn on the faucet, the memories will not flow out. However, there were times when something triggers the memories to come out before the host could even do a thing. And when such a thing happened, without warning, it would be dangerous for the host, because it could overwhelm their mind and could even mess up the host's mental process. As time ticked by, the lines between Freya's brows slowly disappeared. Her face was starting to relax, and it seemed she had succeeded in controlling the chaos in her head. But she still didn't open her eyes for another long while, and remained sitting there, completely unmoving. After an hour, her long silver lashes finally fluttered, and she opened her eyes. Her hands gripped the armrests, and the look on her face showed many contradicting emotions. She looked as though she had just watched an intense, confusing, heartbreaking and horrifying movie she wished she never came across with. But as the initial shock passed, Freya looked as though she still couldn't figure out how to feel about it. She was horrified, yes. But there were too many questions and confusing things that made her think something was missing. That something was wrong. Freya could tell that the flow of the memories she saw wasn't normal. All the memories she had seen before were very clear, 
So why were Ethan's like confusing, tangled treads? Why did it seem like someone had deleted too many scenes? What was going on? Pressing her temples, Priya sighed, and then finally stood. She knew she had already spent too much time inside the cavern, and she still needed to deal with Zack. What's with all these bad timings? She murmured before she took one more long, deep breath and then walked towards the exit. When she stepped out, Priya was surprised to see Zack still standing at the same spot where she left him. She thought he had left and gone to his favorite hiding spot again. Looking at him, Freya somehow managed to yank her attention away from the memories bugging her to the man before her. She stared at him, and once again, he looked away. We need to talk, Freya calmly said as she approached him. About Ethan? His response made Freya halt in her track. Her brows slightly nodded. What do you mean? Why should we talk about Ethan? Freya asked this because she wasn't sure what Zack was trying to say. She thought that there was no way Zack knew about the memories she saw. Because you're thinking about him. Didn't you enter the cavern because of him? Freya's lips slightly parted, and before she knew it, she moved close to Zack with her eyes narrowing. And how did you even know I'm thinking about him? And entered the cavern because of him? Silence followed Freya's words. Her eyes filled with questions as she looked up into Zack's eyes. Freya had always felt Zack was hiding something crucial to her. And now, her suspicions were growing. Answer me, Zack, she demanded. She didn't know why, but at that moment, she couldn't help but think that maybe this man could actually see the things only she was supposed to see and knows the things only she was supposed to know. For a moment, something strange flickered in his silver eyes before he abruptly blinked it away. Well, you know Ethan, right? Speechless, Freya's shoulders dropped, and she pinched the skin between her brows. However, she found herself feeling very glad because it seemed her hunch was wrong. She wouldn't know what to do if her thoughts were actually true. Okay. Let's be serious here, Zack. This talk isn't about anyone else but you, she said. She waited for him to say something, but the man had fallen silent. What are you thinking? You didn't go to Ethan for something petty as creating trouble for him to ease your boredom, are you? Why would you think I didn't go there because of such a petty thing? Don't even try to play words with me, Zack. I knew you're not the type of being to do something idiotic and unnecessarily dangerous just for fun. You're not the type to cause trouble for others. Zack looked away. You're thinking way too highly of me, Freya. Freya closed her eyes and fell silent for a moment. Listen. She paused and stared deep into his eyes. I have no plan to control you or cage you here in the Black Forest. If you wanted to leave this forest... I would not stop you, but only if that's really what you wanted to do, and you're doing it for yourself. However, if you want to leave because of some unacceptable reasons, like you just don't want your existence to cause any problem and disrupt the peacefulness between me and my subjects, then, I'm telling you now, I will not let you leave if that's the only reason you have. Cautiously, Zag just stared at Freya for an immeasurable amount of time. As she waited for him to speak, Freya could see the muscles in his jaw clenching and then relaxing. Okay, he sighed, nodding. You don't have to worry, Freya. I'm not leaving because of that petty reason you're talking about, he told her. His tone was sure and firmer than usual. Still, Freya's eyes narrowed, and she leaned closer onto him, causing Zack to immediately take a step back. Really? That's not the reason? She questioned, her silver eyes dissecting his expressions. He nodded, and Freya could tell he wasn't lying. However, she didn't back off. Then what is the reason? Is this something you really wanted to do? Yes. Again, his eyes were utterly sincere, giving her nothing that could arouse her doubt. Freya could only nod, 
it seemed this man really wants to leave. And she wasn't forcing him at all. But why did she still feel uneasy about letting him go? Wait. As if a light bulb appeared in her head, Freya suddenly looked suspicious. She took a step closer again, but then again, Zack also took a step back. And you're doing this solely for yourself, and not because of someone else, right? She watched him carefully as she spoke. Zack's face stiffened, but he still answered her almost immediately. Yes, he said. But this time, Freya had seen the lie in his eyes and heard it in his voice. This man wasn't good at lying. When Freya didn't say a thing and just glared at him, he looked away. I must... I must leave now, Freya. Who allowed you to leave? She cut him off. Zack whipped his gaze towards her. His brows creased as he looked at her with questions in his eyes. You think I will let you go if you lied to me like that? I didn't. You did. Your answer to my last question is a lie. She stepped forward. And when Zack took a step back again, she continued stepping forward, forcing Zack to keep on stepping back as she spoke. Now tell me, you're doing this for whom? I know you're not doing this for yourself, so don't even try to insist on it. A tree trunk stopped Zack's retreat, his back now against the tree. He was about to move sideways, but Freya had slammed her palms against the tree trunk, even shaking the huge tree slightly because of the impact. Trapped between the queen's hands, Zack bit his lips and rested his head back against the tree. He let out a quiet sigh as his gaze settled in the darkness above. Queen, are you really going to corner a man this way? He spoke slowly and unwillingly. Don't try to change the topic. Look at me and answer me. I must admit, you're acting a little scarier than Ethan right now. Don't make me repeat myself, Zack. You're even reacting as serious as him now. Freya grabbed his collar, forcing him to meet her gaze. Tell me, is it me? Are you perhaps doing this for me? Something strange flickered in his eyes as his lips opened and then closed. It was apparent he was wavering, torn whether or not to answer her. His struggle and that look in his eyes were enough for Freya. The answer was obvious no matter how much he tried to hide it. Why? I need you to explain. Suddenly, Zack's hands were on Freya's shoulders. He pushed her back at arm's length, and without letting go of her shoulders, Zack dropped his head and looked on the ground. His silver hair was cascading down like a silver silk waterfall, hiding his face from her. Please, was all he said. His hands on her shoulders trembled a little. Freya pressed her lips tight. It seemed like whatever he was hiding was beyond simple. Could it be something even she couldn't imagine? Why can't he just say it? Why was this person like this? You're not going to explain anything, are you? Freya's voice softened. Looking at Zack that moment made her feel a little guilty, as if she was a naughty devil cornering a poor angel. She sighed and said, Fine, as she turned, facing away from him. But if you don't tell me, I'll assume it's something much worse than I could even imagine. Don't expect me to let you leave if you won't tell me what you're hiding. Her voice was firm and decisive. When the man behind her didn't speak, she was about to leave when she felt him touch a strand of her hair. Freya was stunned, but Zack didn't give her a chance to turn and suddenly hugged her from behind. The shock immobilized Freya for a moment. What? What are you? I'm sorry. He whispered as his arms around her tightened slightly. The words he said and his pained voice confused Freya even more. What the hell is wrong with you? Zack let go of her. When Freya whipped around, he already had his back towards her. I'm leaving, Queen. Please, don't come after me again. The moment he said those words, he was gone, leaving Freya utterly frustrated and confused. Wait, you little... 
she yelled, angered, before she too immediately disappeared. The Black Forest was always the most special place for the witches. It was the only place where some of the witches' powers were restricted, like their teleportation power. No one, even the queen, could leave or enter the forest without passing through the entrance in their original forms. Thus, Zack had to materialize right before the exit for him to be able to leave. To his surprise, Freya was already guarding the exit. She was glowing like a bright moon, and her twin blades were in her hands. One glance, and Zack knew she was ready for a serious battle. I already told you, I couldn't let you go. Her voice echoed. You'll have to defeat me first if you want to leave. I must at least show the witches proof that I did my very best to stop you. And this is the only way for us to let them know I didn't kick you out of here. Zack's eyes slightly opened wide. Freya, there is no need for this, please. You can just tell them the truth. That I left on my own, and that you really tried to stop me. Zack, words without proof will only cause endless doubts and suspicions. Some of them will definitely think I see you as a threat to my reign. And so I coerced you to leave. So since it seemed you're leaving for my sake, it won't be a problem for you to fight me. Because this is also for my own benefit. If you leave by force, the witches won't question me if they see you hanging out with the vampire prince. Freya, please. If you refuse to fight me, I'll keep coming after you. So don't be stubborn. If you want to leave, fight me for real. I'm not letting you leave unless you defeat me fair and square. Zack shook his head his long silver lashes half-lowering over his eyes. You know I can never... Then just spill out the truth. I'll let you go regardless of the implication, and deal with the witch's questions and doubts. When he shook his head again, Freya lifted her swords and pointed them towards him. Her silver hair was lifting in the slight breeze around her. It's settled then. You can now leave. But get past me by force first. Priya didn't make it sound as if he had a choice, and Zack knew how serious she was. The look in her eyes showed him a steely decision that no word could change. But Zack had to leave. He knew that Ethan was leaving that night, and he also thought that this was his only opportunity to leave. If he delays, Priya would never stop trying to know the truth. Knowing how stubborn and willful this queen was, she would definitely do everything and anything to find what he was hiding from her. He would never let that happen. He must not stay in this forest any longer. He must leave as soon as possible. With a pained look, Zack uttered a silent apology as he finally advanced towards her. He didn't unsheathe his sword. He didn't even hold the hilt. He simply approached her barehanded. Freya waited, faltering a little because she knew the man didn't have any plan to fight her. When he reached her, he grabbed Freya's blade with his bare hands. His blood began to drip on the ground. Let me through, Freya, he urged, and Freya gritted her teeth. She kicked him in the stomach, hard enough for him to be thrown away a few steps from her. She kept her face composed and steely as she looked down at him. Don't play with me, Zack. Just so you know, I'm not as soft-hearted as you. I could be cold as the devil, too, if someone is not taking me seriously. Zack rose from the ground. Unexpectedly, a genuine smile was playing on his face. <laughs> that was a hard kick, Queen. He innocently held his stomach like he was a hungry white puppy, causing Freya's stern gaze to almost crack. Damn, was he really going to use such a dirty trick for her to let her guard down? You're a low-key little devil, Zack. But I won't fall for it. Come on. Don't waste our time and be serious. Because if you don't, I'm telling you, I can stand here and kick you all night. He ignored her words and approached her once again, still not pulling out his sword. Freya didn't let him touch her blade this time and simply kicked him back before he could grab her sword. 
Still, he did the same thing the third time, and then the seventh time. The anger and frustration inside Freya was starting to boil. She never thought she would do something like this. What the hell is wrong with this man? Why the hell is he like this? She struggled to keep her calm. How dare you do this to me? She swallowed hard as they stared at each other. And Zack looked like something not physical kicked him hard again. Only this time, he didn't fall. And the pain was ten times stronger. I'm sorry, was all he said as he looked away and his grip on her blade tightened. He tried to reach for her hand, probably so he could push her to the side, but Freya didn't let him. She dropped the sword in her right hand and punched his jaw hard. He stumbled back. His lips were bleeding. You're a stubborn little devil, Zack. But too bad. I am stubborn too. Don't even think that this petty tactic would work for me. I told you, I'm not as soft-hearted as you. Freya wanted to read his expression, but she refrained. She had been trying not to look into his eyes because she didn't want her resolve to be swayed. Freya had never done anything like this before. She would never hurt anyone who was putting up any fight. So doing this to this man was honestly the most maddening thing she had ever done. Her blood was boiling, threatening to burst. She knew that if this continues, she will lose because she would rather fight to the death than do something like this. When he came to her again, and Freya brought him down with a hard punch on his chest, Freya's breathing became a little erratic. She felt as though she had fought a thousand enemies, and she couldn't help but laugh a little hysterically. This man is driving her insane. She couldn't help but wonder just what kind of secret he was hiding from her, that he had to go to this extent. Her laugh seemed to surprise Zack. His expression changed as he stood there silently, staring at the exit behind her, and then at her. He clenched his fists tight. Zack never wanted to hurt her, so he was trying to make her give up on her own by letting her best him. But it seemed doing this was crueler than fighting. He didn't like the sound of her laughter. He didn't want her laughing like that. Why? Why does it need to come to this? Why is it always like this? Suddenly, Zack's eyes turned gold, and in a blink of an eye, a deafening sound of two swords clashing shook the peaceful forest. Freya finally smiled at his attack, despite the fact that she was pushed back, even though she defended herself on time. One of her swords had already disappeared. As though he was suddenly in haste, he attacked again, and their intense battle had brought many witches in the scene. They watched in shock and horror, not knowing what to do. But it didn't take long, and the heart-stopping battle suddenly halted. Zack was standing behind Freya, his one arm wrapped around her shoulders, and the other holding his blade against her throat. I'm sorry. For the nth time, he apologized again. I cannot tell you, because once you find out the truth, I know you'll never let me go. He continued within him, and with one more sorry, he backed off and finally disappeared. As soon as Zack arrived at Rain's castle, he went straight inside Ethan's study. When he saw Lucas standing in one of the watchtowers, he was relieved because he thought they already left the kingdom. Keith! His voice was a little loud as he strode towards Ethan, placing his palms on top of the prince's massive desk. Ethan, who was busy with his computer, simply glanced at Zack and continued tapping on his laptop again. You're not leaving yet? Zack asked, his voice mellowed out. Seeing that the prince seemed still very busy. Not yet. Why? I thought you were in haste. Well, something came up. I need to deal with it first. Is it because of what Freya saw in the memory stored within her? These words made Ethan's fingers halt. He finally lifted his face and leaned his head against the back of his seat. His gaze on Zack was calm, but something sharp and dangerous was playing in them. Zack's hands clenched. If that's what you're worried about right now, you don't have to be worried about it. She didn't see everything. And how did you know? Biting his lips hard, 
Zack paced in front of Ethan's desk, his hand tugging his hair while Ethan watched him, waiting for the explanation that better come soon. Zack took a deep breath and faced Ethan. He looked around and then closed his eyes, as if to make sure no one was listening. He even put on a barrier to keep other witches from watching the conversation in their crystal balls. She didn't see the worst part of it, Keith. So no matter how much Freya tries to understand the memory she saw, she will fail to put all the puzzles together. All she could do is speculate based on the fragments she saw. But it would remain a confusing mystery to her, Zack said. His words sparked interest in Ethan's flat gaze. I know because half of the memories are inside me. Ethan was silenced, but his eyes were demanding Zack to continue. Freya is in danger, Keith. He struggled for words. I'm sucking the memories from her. Her powers. Everything. Even her life. Zack choked, his eyes miserable. He looked as though a large old wound reopened, and he started bleeding heavily. He turned his back towards Ethan before he continued. This happened before. I was born like this. But I was a weakling when I was young. So the witches, even the queen back then, thought there was nothing special with me. However, when I reached a certain age, I felt power began to surge within me. I was slowly getting stronger while the queen was getting weaker. I realized that her power was being transferred to me even without me doing anything. He paused and looked at the darkness outside the window. Misery and pain colored his silver eyes for a moment, but he quickly blinked it away. He sounded as though he didn't want to tell more about the story, more than what he had said. I thought things would be different this time, but I was wrong. Nothing has changed, Keith. So you wanted to die to save Freya? Ethan's tone was severe but neutral. Zack turned and faced him. Yes, he answered without any hesitation. She doesn't deserve this. This is all my fault for being here. For being alive again. I'm not supposed to be in this world anymore, Keith. I can't... I can't let this happen. Ethan pinched the bridge of his nose as he closed his eyes. He had thought of the worst-case scenario when he first suspected Zack's reason for wanting to die. But this was far graver and complicated than he thought. How did you know that what happened in the past is going to happen again? Is it only because of the memories you received? What I'm trying to say is, Freya is still powerful and strong. I didn't notice any change in her. Ethan reasoned as his gaze on Zack deepened. I know it's going to happen again. I just confirmed it a while ago. Zack's jaw clenched tightly. I saw some strands of her hair darkening. That's the first sign. The room went silent for a long while before Zack spoke again. That's why... Please, Keith, I need your help. You managed to find a way to kill Dahlia. I believe there's definitely a way for me to die, too. It's not that easy, Zack. And I'm not the one who found the way to kill her. The prophecy led the way. I simply made sure it would happen. Then let's ask the prophetess. Their eyes met as silence reigned between them again. Zack knew that the prophetess might disagree with this. He knew about the vows of the vampire's prophetess that they would never use their power for anything that wasn't related to the vampires. Zack also knew that the vampires had nothing to do with his problem and that the prophetess's power might refuse to work, even if she tries. Apart from the fact that Dahlia was a threat to the vampires, Oliver was a half-vampire, so the vampire prophetess was obliged to help. But he wasn't. He was a witch, and there was no guarantee that the prophetess could see anything. However, Zack refused to give in. This was the easiest and fastest way. He needed the prophetess's help before it was too late. I hate to say this, but... Zack hesitated for a moment. Don't you think this is now your opportunity to pay your debt to the witches? I saw everything, Ethan. Ethan's expression didn't change, but the air around him darkened. His eyes grew intent, 
but too soon, faded back to their usual calmness. That is not the problem here, Zack, Ethan said. You know that it might not work. The possibility that the Prophetess could see a thing about this is close to zero. The Prophetess couldn't even help in a lot of things related to the vampires, no matter how huge the problem is. I know, Zack straightened. There was no sign of surrender or doubt in his willful eyes. But if it's you, it'll work. I know you'll make it work, Keith. At dawn, in Nora and Oliver's mansion, the sound of a descending helicopter awakened everyone in the mansion. Oliver's face was dark with anger as he rose from their bed, looking as though he was more than ready to go and crumple the damn noisy helicopter like it was made of paper. He had gotten a little exercise hours ago by beating all those men to a pulp, then sending them all away, black and blue. And yet, it seemed Jessica's father was such a stubborn old man. Did he send the military this time to retrieve his daughter? Oliver cracked his knuckles as he grabbed his robe and covered his perfect naked torso. His gunmetal gray eyes gleamed in the dark. How dare they disturb his wife's beauty rest? Oliver! Nora caught his wrist before he could walk away. Yes? He turned. His hardened face immediately went soft. Don't be too worked up, okay? Remember, they're humans, she said. And Oliver scratched his neck. I think I should come with you. No way, my love. They might be some high-caliber thugs or the military. He bent and kissed the tip of Nora's nose. Don't worry. I'll never let anyone fire a gun. I can't let anything or anyone startle our little one's precious rest. He added as he placed his hand on her belly. Stay here. No. I'll go check on Jessica, Oliver. Oliver sighed, knowing he couldn't make his wife stay still as he wished. Okay. The couple then walked out of their bedroom. Because Oliver was in haste, worried that the men outside would invade the house before he could step out to meet them, he carried Nora and leaped down the grand stairs. He put Nora down in the middle of the living room while Jessica ran towards them. Stay here, you two. I'll deal with them, said Oliver, and then he was gone. The instant Oliver pushed the door open and stepped out, he raised a brow. It seemed he was wrong thinking that Jessica's father had sent another group of men for him to beat up. A man around his fifties was walking towards him with two men in black on his sides. I believe you're the man who single-handedly beat up my elite men last night, the old man said. He was dressed in a fine business suit and wearing a stern face. Who are you? He asked when Oliver remained quiet. I'm the husband of your daughter's best friend. Oliver replied in a proud tone. My daughter's best friend? Oh, Nora. Correct. What can I do for you? The old man's gaze at Oliver was cautious. He was already old, and he had met all kinds of powerful men throughout his lifetime. He wasn't stupid not to feel and notice that this man was no ordinary. The old man could only think one thing at the sight of Oliver. No wonder my men stood no chance against him. This man is dangerous. Just who is he? He wanted to ask. It was rare to find someone with such a presence. The old man immediately thought of that unfortunate god of the business world, Ethan Quinn. This man gives off the same aura that forces any human being to suddenly feel inferior in their presence. He noticed that this man also had the same eyes as that Ethan Quinn. It would seem this man's eyes were brighter compared to that dead man. Was this man related to that person? Or was this a coincidence? I came to fetch my daughter. The old man didn't dare act foolishly. He didn't know anything about this man so he better be careful. Tell her I'm here. Her mother's looking for her. When Oliver looked as though he wouldn't budge, the old man continued. My wife is very sick right now. She wanted to see Jessica. Oliver sighed. It seemed he really need to tell this to Jessica first. Fine. Wait here. Hastily, Oliver entered the house and approached the two ladies sitting in front of the fireplace. How is it? Nora asked as she stood. Oliver looked at Jessica. Your father is here. 
He said your mother is very sick, and she wanted to see you. The room went silent after Oliver said those words. Jessica looked worried, but there was also doubt in her eyes. What do you want me to do? If you want me to send them away, just say it, Oliver said. And after a long moment, Jessica shook her head. No, I'll go with him. Nora creased her brows as she worriedly held Jessica's hand. Jessica, my father might be lying, but he could be saying the truth as well. I haven't seen my mother since Dad told me she was rushed to the hospital. Are you sure? Oliver was skeptical. I can go and confirm things first if you want. It's safer that way. Jessica smiled at the couple. It's fine. Thank you for protecting me here. But I can't hide here like this forever. I'm gonna face this myself. Don't worry, nothing will happen to me. Even though my father loves money more than me, he never abused me physically. As long as he brings me to our home and not to Tristan's place, I'll be fine. Jessica assured them. I think this is now my chance to speak up to them. I'll try to tell them everything and convince them. Then I'll send someone to make sure he'll bring you home, Oliver said, and Jessica nodded before she hugged Nora. Thanks, Nora. Please tell Noah I'll wait for him. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Call me once you're home, okay? Okay. With that, Jessica left with her father. She didn't say anything the whole trip until the helicopter landed at the residence's spacious backyard. Jessica walked back to her house with her father. Who is that man? Her father immediately asked. Is that man really that girl's husband? Yes, he's Nora's husband, Jessica answered coldly. Oliver must have piqued his interest, and Jessica was irked that that was the first thing he asked her. Where's mom? She then asked as the entrance door closed behind them. The old man casually took off his jacket. She's upstairs, busy calling the guests. Jessica gritted her teeth. You said she's very sick. She is, but your mother is stubborn. You know just how much she's dreaming of this. She wanted nothing but the best for you. So despite being told by the doctors that she must rest, she won't stay still. She wanted to make sure that all special guests will arrive. Wait, what special guest are you talking about? Don't play dumb. The old man glared at her. No matter what you will say, you will marry Tristan today. And no one, not even you, can postpone it. Jessica's eyes flared with shock. Then they narrowed in utter fury. But she didn't speak anymore. She had expected this. But deep within her, she had hoped that her father would not stoop this low. Jessica was angry and mad at herself for still hoping despite all the things her father showed and did to her. He would never care about her, ever. Clenching her fists tight, Jessica swallowed all the words she had been planning to say. She had thought well-scripted words to convince her father, but she understood now that it does not matter anymore. This man would never listen to her or consider any consequences. Take her to her room, the man then ordered his guards. Lock her inside with the stylists. Don't open the door unless I order it. The man's stern and absolute words made the guards immediately move. Jessica didn't fight anymore. She simply glared at the men and started walking towards the staircase before the men could touch her. When she entered her room, an elegant designer wedding dress welcomed her. Stylists and makeup artists were already waiting for her inside. She just stood by the door looking at the dress with a cold expression as the door behind her shut close. The people inside smiled at her as one of them approached her. Before she knew it, she was sitting in front of the mirror. Jessica was outwardly calm, but her insides were in turmoil. They didn't let her give Nora a call because the guards had seized her cell phone. But despite the situation, there was no sign of surrender in Jessica's eyes. She knew she could not stop this. If she tries to run away, her mother will surely collapse again. And her father... Jessica was afraid of what her father will do next. 
She didn't want to be the cause of him doing more horrible things than what he had already done. Weighing the pros and cons, Jessica decided to trust Noah. She knew that by now, Nora and Oliver had already told Noah that her father Kane took her home. She thought that maybe, fighting by herself and running away on her own was never the right move. Because she'd been doing that for so long, and yet nothing changed. She would always end up being caught and defeated, no matter how much she tried to fight and run. Perhaps it was better for her to act like the damsel in distress this time, and wait for her knight in shining armor. The thought made Jessica bite her lower lip. Being the damsel in distress was never cool to her. She liked being her own hero, because since she was young, she had already learned that no one would come and save her. She had been her very own hero for so long that when Noah saved her from Tristan, Jessica couldn't explain the feeling she had felt that time. She realized she wanted to be treated by someone as his beloved heroine, too. She realized that she also wanted her own hero, her very own knight in shining armor. Time went by unnoticed, and someone finally opened the door. Jessica looked at herself in the mirror, but her expression remained flat. Her mother came to see her, and despite her apparent weakness, Jessica thought that this was the biggest smile her mother had ever showed for a very long time. She was happy, probably the happiest mother on earth that day. Jessica could only clench her fists tight, secretly. She was not sure what will happen today, but one thing she was sure of was that disappointment and tears might replace the happiness in her mother's eyes later. Jessica hoped and wished she could make her mother's happiness last a little longer. If only her mother would be happy, regardless of who her choice was. When her mother left, Jessica was surrounded by men in black. It was time for her to go to the wedding venue. She heard that her mother had dealt with everything. She had chosen a church wedding on a private island owned by the young family. Her mother happily told Jessica that the old church on the island was where her great-grandparents wedded. A helicopter descended in the backyard, and Jessica was immediately escorted towards it. She didn't know the wedding will be held on an island, and she didn't know that she would be transported through a helicopter. Her parents deliberately hid that information from her until the very last minute. Jessica took a sharp and deep breath. Her will started to waver a little. She had been expecting her knight in shining armor to suddenly appear in the middle of the road and kidnap her, the bride. But now that she would actually travel by air, how could Noah even reach her? Shaking her head, Jessica breathed deeply again. No, my Noah is a vampire. He's unstoppable. He would definitely arrive in time. He's faster than a chopper, she told herself with a haughty smile. And with just that, Jessica began to feel incredibly confident again. She just needed to trust in Noah now and wait for him. After all, that's his last word to her before he left her yesterday. He asked her to wait for him. The small island looked luxuriously decorated. Luxurious yachts were everywhere around the island. It seemed the guests came in the island by water. Jessica looked around as the man in black escorted her towards the small church. The guests seemed to be already waiting inside the church now. Realizing that the wedding might begin as soon as she reached the church's door, Jessica couldn't help but look around. Her heart settled to thud inside her ribcage. All she could see outside the church were men in black. They were the guards of the rich people inside. Noah, she uttered to herself. Where are you? Are you still on your way here? As she was talking to herself, her escorts made her stand right in front of the church's double door. Dread began to grip Jessica's heart. There was only one thing reverberating in her mind at that moment, and it was the thought that she must do something, anything, to delay this wedding. She had to buy time for her knight in shining armor to arrive. But how? What should she possibly do to cause a ruckus big enough to delay a wedding? Jessica started panicking when she saw two of the men in black approach the door and stand on both sides, and then simultaneously 
held the door handles. Her heart was pounding so loudly, it was rumbling so deafeningly in her ears, and making her feel so overwhelmed. No, wait, wait a second, no eyes in here yet. Unable to exercise logic and sense properly, perhaps due to all that panic and dread filling her heart and mind, the best option Jessica could think of doing at that moment was to scream at the men to stop. However, before sounds could escape from her lips, the men abruptly let go of the door handles. One of them seemed to be talking to someone who was speaking into his Bluetooth earphone while the other was looking at his wristwatch. Having this godsend interruption without her needing to embarrass herself, Jessica's hysterical panic dropped down just a notch, and curiosity began to momentarily replace the desperate look in her eyes. What's wrong? Is there a problem? She asked. The men turned towards her and then stared at each other, silently communicating amongst themselves if it was a wise thing for them to answer her queries or not. Jessica's expression hardened at their reluctance, and she squared her shoulders. Did you not hear me? Is there a problem? Jessica's voice was fiery and sounded out her temper, causing the men to blink in surprise. How did the poor damsel in distress suddenly look like a fierce villainess? Uh, it's not a major problem, Miss Jessica. It's just that... The man paused and looked at his comrade again. What? Spit it out! Jessica demanded, and the man sighed. Sir told us to have you stand by for a little while longer. Jessica creased her brows in surprise. They were proceeding with so much haste just a while ago. So why the sudden hold-up? Why? Is there a problem? It seems Mr. Flynn has not arrived yet. But don't worry, Miss Jessica. I'm certain he's already on his way here. Something major must have delayed him. The surprise was so shocking, Jessica momentarily fell into a trance. However, the next moment, the corners of her lips curved up slightly. So you're saying that the groom isn't here yet? She mumbled to herself. Her voice had a tinge of amusement to it. And you men want me, the star of the show, to continue standing and waiting in front of the church's door to wait for him? Um, yes, miss. The procession was supposed to start by now, but sir said we can delay for another five to ten minutes. The men's tone was hesitant. Their face were filled with confusion and puzzlement upon seeing the smile suddenly blooming upon Jessica's face. <laughs> Jessica's laughter echoed, surprising and disorienting the men in black even more. Men, she said as soon as her laughter stopped, and she took small measured steps towards them, taking advantage of their bewilderment. She stood between the two men in black and looked at them. On a wedding day, grooms are supposed to be the ones who wait for their brides, not the other way around. A man who fails to arrive on time for his wedding day fails as a man and a woman who willingly waits for her late groom will only be called as stupid and i refuse to be acknowledged as a stupid person before the men could even process what jessica had just said jessica lifted her gown and kicked the door open she had given all her strength in that one kick that the door made a dramatic loud bang when it flew open all heads turned as the bride entered with a wide smile The shocked men didn't even know what to do, as Jessica didn't give them a chance to react, much less to seize her. She started her own march without warning. She could see confusion and shock on everyone's faces. She saw her father, and his eyes were almost bulging out of their sockets. And then, suddenly, the music started. Jessica couldn't stop the huge smile on her face, because she knew that Tristan was not going to arrive. He must be with her Noah right now. Her knight in shining armor must have held him captive to stop the wedding. Oh God, she felt so happy. Her knight saved her once again. And she was so right. She was so glad she had trusted him. Noah would never let her marry that bastard. Jessica didn't stop and continued walking down the aisle. The audience was so confused because they knew that the groom was not there and had yet to arrive. 
So why was the bride smiling like she was the happiest bride in the world? Her parents were frozen in shock and couldn't react. When her father realized what his daughter had done, Jessica was already reaching the end of the aisle and about to step onto the stage. The man strode towards her, and just as she placed her foot on the first step leading to the stage, her father caught her arm. Rage made his eyes turn incredibly dangerous, as if he was preparing to drag Jessica out of the church. However, before the infuriated Mr. William could speak or yank out Jessica, someone came and stood in front of them. A tall and gorgeous man in tailored wedding suit made everyone catch their breaths. Even Jessica's father was forced to halt at the sight of this good-looking stranger, while Jessica literally turned into a statue and had her lips parted as she stared at him. The man faced Jessica's father, and with a serious expression, he spoke, Since the groom has decided to forfeit, I would like to be the groom instead, and marry your daughter. Jessica's father gritted his teeth in anger, face turning an interesting shade of deep red. Who the fuck? Please, let me introduce myself. Noah cut him off as he announced firmly and confidently. I'm Noah Brown, CEO of Brown Enterprise. The one and only heir of my late brother, Ethan Brown. Mr. William was shocked to his core, and his mind was in a buzz just hearing the man's introduction that it took him quite a while to gather his wits again. This old but experienced businessman didn't want to believe this claim right at the drop of a hat. Or at least, there first needed to be confirmation of identity if what this person before him had said was true. But one look into this young man's eyes rendered Mr. Williams speechless. The face of the man he met at dawn and Ethan Brown's cold eyes suddenly appeared in the old man's mind at the sight of the younger man in front of him. This person didn't have the unfathomable and staggering aura those other two had, but he could feel this man was just like them someone extraordinary, and not one he could mess up. He couldn't doubt, even if he wanted to, as he could tell that this person was definitely related to Ethan Brown. How did his daughter get acquainted with these people? And how come Ethan Brown managed to hide his relatives like these? He had tried to investigate Ethan Brown's origins for a long time, and he couldn't even find a single relative. So where did this man come from? And more importantly... How could this practical stranger request, if that way of speaking can even be said to be a request, to marry his daughter like this? Why was he even here in the first place? Mr. William then turned around to observe Jessica, and when he saw the manner his daughter looked at the man and the gaze she had in her eyes, he realized she indeed knew the man. But in the very next second, a regrettable expression colored the old man's face. He looked as though he had just watched his chance to win the ultimate lottery slip right down the drain. The old man also knew for a fact that there was no way on God's green earth that Tristan would back out from this wedding. Though late, he would surely arrive and marry Jessica. But wait, how did you know that Mr. Flynn has forfeited? Mr. William asked Noah with eyes filled with suspicion. Calmly, Noah leaned a little closer to him because I just met him a few hours ago. He told me he's not going to marry Jessica. Impossible! Why would he suddenly back, sir? Noah cut him off, and he moved an inch closer to whisper right into the ears of the old man. I'm sorry to inform you about this, but Mr. Flynn sold all his rights in your company to me. His shares are also mine now, so he's not going to arrive anymore, Mr. William. You can go confirm the things I've said with whoever you need to, if you're doubting my words. Mr. William's eyes widened like saucers. He took a moment to think, before seeming to have made a decision. He then slipped his hand into his pocket, pulled out a cell phone, and made a call whilst walking towards the corner of the hall. As soon as the old man left, Noah's attention instantly returned to Jessica. His serious gaze immediately melted the moment their eyes met, as Jessica's glimmered with tears threatening to fall. Noah! She uttered, and Noah gently caressed her cheek. You're so beautiful, Jessica. He fought the urge to hug her and kiss her. I can't believe you're here! 
The look in her eyes made Noah swallow hard, and he almost kissed her right then and there. Thankfully, the murmurs of the guests' confusion brought him back to his senses. He pulled his eyes off Jessica and looked at all the guests congregating in the hall's pews. His gaze also fell to the old man to the side of the hall, whose attention was now completely focused on his call. When he turned his gentle gaze to Jessica again, a mischievous and sweet smile curved on his lips. The next second, he knelt on one knee in front of Jessica and popped open a small box as he looked up at her, his eyes glimmering, fully focused on her as though she was magic. Jessica, will you marry me? He asked, and for a few too many heartbeats, Jessica didn't breathe at all. When she finally did resume breathing, it was with a hard gasp and tears of joy. The audience also gasped in shocked surprise. Everyone's confusion and murmurs were replaced with excitement as they watched a beautiful fairy tale unfold right before their very eyes. Jessica couldn't speak. She felt like her heart was about to burst with overwhelming and extreme happiness. She never thought Noah would do this. He was truly unbelievable. Fighting the urge to jump on him and kiss him like there was no tomorrow, Jessica frantically nodded. She didn't speak, as she was trying her very best not to cry, and most probably ruin her makeup in the process. She was also very much aware that they were in a not-so-favorable situation. She was afraid that her father might just walk back into the scene at any moment and ruin this most perfect moment in her entire life. Looking at Noah's wide and beautiful smile, Jessica's heart swelled with myriads of emotions. She felt like she was dreaming as Noah slipped the diamond ring onto her finger. I love you, Jessica, he declared as he kissed the ring on her finger before he rose and hugged her tight. The crowd unexpectedly gave them a roar of approval and an approving applause, causing the couple to look at them. They laughed happily together, and just as Jessica thought Noah would lift her up and take her out of the church, he took Jessica's hand and led her towards the altar. Gasps of shock filled the church hall. Now that we're already engaged, it's time to get married, Jessica, he told her. And Jessica didn't even need to think anymore, as she immediately and happily said, Yes, yes, let's get married now, earning another round of surprised gasps from the guests. This event would probably be recorded as the most bizarre wedding of the year. The priest was blinking in disbelief when Noah's voice jolted him to his senses. As you can see, me and my fiancé are quite in need of some haste here, he said as he threw a glance towards Jessica's father, who was still completely oblivious about what was happening in the church as he was blazing in anger in the corner while speaking on his phone. Please, start now, sir before the not-so-divine intervention appear to stop our wedding. The priest was extremely hesitant to make a move. There was an obvious doubtful look plastered all over his face. But when he turned to look at the bride and saw the apparent excitement, pure happiness, and unbridled eagerness that were overflowing from her expressive eyes, the priest could not help but heave a big sigh. He could only do what was due to him. Are you absolutely certain about this, Miss William? I... Very, very, utterly, completely certain, sir. Jessica's immediate response, with all the superlatives, almost made the priest laugh out loud right on the spot. And with that last doubt dispelled, he finally relented. As the ceremony started, Jessica's heart was thumping so loudly in her chest. She couldn't deny that she was somewhat agitated and restless. She was nervous that her father's voice would suddenly crash through this dream come true for her with a bang and ruin both their magical moment. However, as she looked at Noah, Jessica's heart just began to feel like somehow, in some way, everything was going to be all right in the end. It was amazing how he could calm her so easily without doing anything or saying a single word to ease her troubled heart and mind. But despite the calmness Noah had inspired in her, Jessica couldn't stop herself from making little hand gestures and urging the priest to hasten the proceedings. Her request made the priest blink 
while Noah leaned in on her slightly with a smile and whispered, Relax, my bride. But I can't help it. I, I... Can no longer wait? Yes, I can't wait anymore. The priest cleared his throat, while sporting a slight blush, looking as though he was trying to stop himself from smiling. Noah and Jessica didn't notice it, because their eyes were locked onto each other, but they missed how the priest had thrown a furtive glance at Jessica's father. Knowing what kind of situation this couple before him was in at that moment, the priest finally nodded and gave in. He could see the remarkable love in both the bride and groom's eyes, and he didn't wish for anyone to ruin their holy union. And thus, to everyone's surprise, including the bride and groom, the priest went on in haste, as requested, and in what seemed to be just a few moments, it was already time for them to recite their wedding vows. Jessica William, do you take Noah Brown to be your lawful husband, to have and to hold, for better or for worse, for as long as you both shall live? I do, Jessica exclaimed with a wide and emotional smile. Noah Brown, do you take Jessica William to be your lawful wife, to have and to hold, for better or for worse, for as long as you both shall live? I do, Noah replied immediately as he gazed deeply into Jessica's eyes. With the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Noah, you may now kiss... The priest was not even given the chance to even finish his sentence because the bride had surprisingly made her move in advance and kissed the groom. The audience's eyes widened, including the priest. But after a second, they all cheered happily for the newlyweds. Some of the older guests were chuckling amongst themselves and shaking their heads as they witnessed the enthusiasm of the new wife. Everyone was in awe. They had just witnessed a real shotgun wedding and they all thought it was utterly exciting. Every single one of the guests were convinced and had the same thoughts that this wedding would probably go down in history as the most unforgettable wedding of the century from all that they have witnessed earlier. Noah! Oh God! I can't believe you're my husband now! Jessica said when their lips parted. The world around them had become a blur and they could no longer hear anything but each other's voice. Yes, you're my wife now, Jessica, Noah uttered, and this time, he was the one who kissed her. They kissed for a long time, that they were breathless when their lips parted. My wife, princess or piggy? He asked playfully, and Jessica's eyes glimmered as she laughed and slapped him playfully on his arm, remembering that time when he asked her this before. What do you think I'll choose, huh, hubby? Without answering, Noah lifted his wife, princess style, and stepped down from the stage. Jessica caught her mom, and she nearly burst into tears when she saw her radiant, smiling face. She never thought that her mother would actually look pleased and smiling, as though she was happy for her. Jessica even blinked, as if to confirm if what she saw was real. When her mother nodded at her, Jessica smiled. She was so happy that her mother seemed to finally approve of her choice. Jessica dragged her gaze towards her father, and her eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. Standing majestically next to her father was Nora and Oliver. It was pretty obvious that Oliver was there to stop her father from doing anything stupid and unwanted, that is. And she couldn't help but feel her heart being overwhelmed and overflowing with emotions. Oh my god! Jessica could no longer stop her tears of joy, and a few teardrops fell from her eyes. Thank you, Jessica uttered under her breath, and Nora winked at her as though she had heard her. She even gestured a good luck sign towards her before Noah finally whisked her swiftly out of the church building. A helicopter was already idling outside the church, waiting for them. Did Nora and Oliver come with you? Jessica asked as they approached the helicopter. Yes, they tagged along. Damn, you're so... She trailed off, unable to speak anymore, because of all the emotions and adrenaline, so she just hugged him tight. Noah kissed her head and proceeded to climb into the helicopter before helping Jessica in after him. 
Like a koala, Jessica hung tightly onto Noah as the helicopter ascended. Lifting her face to face him, Noah wiped the remnants of her tears that was still decorating her cheek. You're my wife now, Jessica. You're officially mine now. It came out as a small possessive growl that did things to her insides. His eyes glimmered with overflowing emotions. I've always been yours, Noah. I love you. Thank you for saving me. I love you, my husband. I will love you forever. As soon as she said those words, her lips met his passionately and devoured Noah's mouth. Her wild mouth nearly kicked Noah's sanity out of the window. Thankfully, Noah managed to stop her. Please, wait a little longer until we land, my dear wife. I'm afraid our pilot will end up crashing this helicopter if we... He trailed off as Jessica bit her lip, flushing red at the realization that someone else was also with them, witnessing that little hot scene earlier. Where are we going? She asked, trying to distract herself from jumping him again. Taking you on a honeymoon, he replied as he flashed her a seductive grin, yet again causing her brain to overheat and malfunction. The helicopter then landed at a certain white beach far from the island where they wedded. This island was bigger than the one owned by the Williams, and Jessica, of course, knew who owned this beautiful piece of land. Ethan Brown owned it. Jessica was still in Noah's arms as he walked away from the helicopter. When Jessica looked ahead, she noticed that petals were scattered on the white sand, creating a path. <gasps> oh my! Jessica gasped in surprise. Her smile widened, seeing the romantic setting. She didn't expect something like this, since she knew that their wedding was not planned. Nora and Oliver prepared this, Noah said suddenly, probably noticing the curiosity in Jessica's eyes. They both came and told me that Mr. William had taken you away from their house this dawn. When I told them about my plan of crashing the wedding, they both supported me. But then, after I dealt with Tristan and headed to the island, they just disappeared on me. I didn't know where they went. It appeared they were here all along, preparing the venue. Oliver told me that this is their gift to us. Jessica couldn't help but feel touched. Her best friend was really the best friend she ever had. We're blessed, because you have amazing brothers, and I have an amazing best friend. Yes. Damn, they're so sweet. They are. Noah agreed, and Jessica grasped Noah tighter around the neck and lifted her lips to his. But to me, you're still the sweetest, darling. I love you, she whispered against his lips. And before they knew it, they were kissing passionately, the hot, mm -hmm. exciting waft mm -hmm. of their breaths mm -hmm. filling each other's mouth. Noah, Jessica uttered, her hand reaching naughtily for the buttons of Noah's shirt without breaking their first wild and passionate kiss as a married couple. She seemed to have forgotten that they were still on the beach. Noah groaned as he felt her warm hands already roaming around his torso. And then, all of a sudden, he lifted her again. But this time, he didn't walk anymore. He leaped with her in his arms, and in just a few moments, they landed on the veranda of a stunning villa. Petals were also scattered on the veranda's floor, as though someone had predicted that Noah wouldn't enter the house through the door. They knew you're not going to enter through the door, Jessica chuckled as Noah finally put her down. But she didn't move her arms on his neck, and impatiently, she rammed her lips on his again, not letting him speak at all. Another helpless groan vibrated through Noah's throat that made Jessica smile. You're driving me insane, Jessica he uttered in a husky voice as his hands grabbed her hips and pulled her close against him. And then he hugged her, so very tight, as his lips kissed the hollow below her ear. But then suddenly, he pulled away and held her shoulders at arm's length. His temples were already wet with sweat, but he was fighting his desire so well. Before Jessica could ask what was wrong, he spoke. I'm sorry. I should be asking you if you're all right first, he asked worriedly as his gaze searched her. She blinked at him. Huh? I'm fine. They didn't do anything to you, right? 
I was so worried when I heard your father took you away. I was worried you fought him and he'd end up doing... He paused and realized what he was trying to say. Jessica lifted her hand and touched his cheek gently. It pained her that she had made this man worry for her like this. I'm fine, Noah. Why don't we go inside so you can check every part of my body yourself? She asked. And though she didn't intend to tell him that to seduce him, Noah swallowed. And the worry in his eyes was immediately replaced with fiery desire. He flushed, and Jessica marveled at the sight of this gorgeous man's reddened face. His gray eyes were fierce and hot on Jessica's face, that the world seemed to turn many degrees hotter. Thrilled and seduced, Jessica could no longer wait, and she grabbed her husband's hand and dragged him inside the villa. She followed the petals on the floor, and at last, they reached the door of a certain room. When Jessica opened it, she couldn't help but bite her lower lip. The bed was decorated with red petals. There was also wine prepared on the table. It was beautiful and romantic. She couldn't ask for more. Warning. This chapter contains mature content not suitable for young readers. Jessica whipped towards Noah, and he had an interesting expression as his gaze settled on the bed filled with petals. Jessica yanked him, causing him to turn back his eyes on her. She tiptoed as if to kiss him, but to Noah's dismay, she didn't. She simply rubbed their noses as she pushed him back until they reached the bed, and Jessica pushed him down. Noah looked up as he sat at the edge of the bed. Their eyes met, and Noah could only swallow again when she backed away from him. You want to check my body, right? My darling? She asked in a seductive voice, and she started to undress in front of him. When her wedding dress hit the floor, Noah inhaled sharply. She wasn't even fully naked yet, and he was already reacting. Jessica always loved Noah's reaction in every little thing she did. Do you believe me now? She asked him, naughtily. And as she reached for her panties, Noah lost it and stood and grabbed her, lifting her from the circle of the discarded white dress. There was a glitter of devil's fire in his eyes as he stared at her before he devoured her mouth. His hand impatiently took off her bra, and when his hands moved to her panties... She heard the sound of ripping fabric. Jessica's eyes widened slightly and then smiled as she felt her panties slid down between her legs. He gripped her hips and as her breast crashed against him, a sudden rush of sensation made Jessica's breathing became even harsher. The next moment, she was on the bed, fully naked and surrounded by red petals. The vivid red petals were a beautiful contrast against her smooth white skin. God, you're so beautiful, he uttered, his voice incredibly deep and filled with nothing but love and lustful desire. His gaze never left her as he stripped with urgency. It didn't take long, and he stood before her naked. Despite seeing his nude perfection many times before, Jessica couldn't help but still worship every part of him. From his gorgeous face, to the sleek, tightly muscled surface of his torso, and then down to his... Ah, uh, she couldn't stop herself from licking her lips as her insides began to ache and quiver in need at the sight of his mighty sword. She wanted him inside her so bad, even though they had just done it yesterday. She really crazily craved for this man now. While Noah was standing there, slowly touching his hardness as he looked at her, Jessica's desire for him heightening to an excruciating degree. He seemed to be savoring the sight of her lying on top of the petals. She could see the look in his eyes, and he was worshipping her body the same way she worshipped his. But Jessica could no longer bear it, so she moved, planning to grab him. But Noah didn't even let her sit. He was suddenly on top of her, pinning her down. His hands were holding her wrists gently against the mattress as he looked down at her. Don't, my wife. He whispered huskily as he bent and showered kisses on her face. 
Please let me this time. It's my turn to make you feel good. He added. And Jessica felt utterly thrilled and aroused. She always loved it when this man showed her his beastly side in bed. She loved the gentle and submissive Noah, but she also loved it when he was dominant. She nodded as she moaned in anticipation, mm. and his mouth was on her breast before she knew it, sucking her greedily as though he had been so starved for her. His lips soft and warm against her skin mm. as his hands roamed around her possessively. After devouring her breast and making Jessica whimper and moan beneath him, Noah then pushed her thighs wide. His lips abandoned her breast and moved downwards. When he reached her, he didn't waste a moment and kissed her tenderly at first, licking, circling, and drawing lightly before he hastened his pace and devoured her ravenously. Jessica gasped at the sudden change of pace, and he grabbed his hair. Her scandalous moans had started to fill the room. Oh, God! Noah! Oh, oh, I can't! Jessica strained beneath him, and he slowed down again. It was like the sudden strong wind became a mere breeze. No! Don't stop! Please! She uttered in dismay. Please! I'm wet enough, Noah! Take me now! Inside me, please! She pleaded, and Noah looked up. His eyes were so vivid and deep. The way he looked at her that moment made him look even hotter and irresistible. His hand landed gently over her stomach and rubbed her there in soothing circles as his hypnotic sexy voice echoed. Patience, my wife. We're on our honeymoon. We can take our time. Oh no, I can't wait anymore, husband. She complained as she grabbed his hand and weakly pulled him. But Noah didn't budge and chuckled softly instead against her sex. Jessica shivered at the sensation of his breath and laughter. Oh, God, Noah! I can't bear much more of this! The beast didn't listen. But he did resume his ravenous pace as he continued licking over her before his tongue entered inside her, lewd and deep, until she was breathing love words and screaming his name. And then, finally... Noah moved upward and seized her mouth, his hardness hot and hard against her, and she voluntarily spread her legs to welcome him inside. When he entered her in a thick slide, Jessica gasped and then moaned at the incredible feeling of him finally filling her again. He paused, staring down at her with dilated eyes. I love you, Jessica, he uttered, and Jessica's hands reached out for him. I love you too, very much. She pulled him into her as she arched her hips to meet his thrust, causing Noah to close his eyes and quiver in pleasure. He lifted her head, and clenching her hair, he kissed her again, wildly and almost desperately. More, she moaned against his lips, as her fingers linking behind his neck. Please. Gasping, she arched to make him deeper, harder. Jessica began to clutch at his hair hard, too impassioned to be gentle. Her legs wrapped around his waist as her insides quivered and clenched and tightened around his hardness with ravenous greed. Ah, oh, Jessica, he growled. His handsome face was ravaged by extreme lust and desire that was flooding them both. He continued his onslaught until his steady hard thrusts brought her to the edge of release when he suddenly withdrew and turned her over, surprising Jessica once again. Oh my. May I? He whispered in haste as his body covered her. I won't hurt you. This will... Yes, yes, take me! Jessica could no longer take it. Noah's eyes glimmered at her enthusiastic approval, and the next moment, he was sliding impossibly deep inside her. They were so damn wild... They almost couldn't breathe because of the intense pleasure. She had possessed him, and he had possessed her wholly. Oh, Jessica, he said in a guttural whisper as his thrusts from behind her came even harder, deeper, thicker. I'm... Instinct took over, and Jessica's hips moved on their own until her thighs began to clench. She fisted in the mattress 
as Noah's jaw and neck taut with strain. Completely limp from the intensity of their lovemaking, the newlyweds took minutes, just lying there, basking in the aftermath, and catching their breaths before either of them spoke. <laughs> I can't believe you're such a beast, she chuckled softly. They were still wrapped around each other, unwilling to part. The villa was so quiet and calm that the both of them could feel nothing but peace just being there. Noah stared down at her, his eyes glimmering in his flushed face. You don't like it? He asked playfully, despite knowing full well that his wife loved his roughness and wildness in bed. Her moans and erotic pleas to ravage her harder and deeper was still resoundingly fresh in his mind, and he just felt incredibly pleased and could not help but sensed within himself the renewed twinges of arousal once again. Do I look like I don't like it? He shook his head as he smiled at her in a way that almost made her heart stop. Jessica returned his smile and then nuzzled herself closer to him, hugging him even tighter in the process. They were silent once again, both listening to each other's heartbeats, reveling in the simple fact that they were both alive, well, and together in the way that mattered most. Jessica began to recall everything that happened before, during, and after the wedding, their honeymoon, when suddenly, Tristan's unpleasant face popped up in her mind, causing her to grimace, and Noah arched his eyebrows at her unexpected reaction. She didn't know why, but a chill went through her just thinking about him. What happened to Tristan? she asked, as a response to Noah's silent questioning. She then felt Noah's body tensed up and bristle a little. It seemed he didn't like hearing Tristan's name voiced out from her lips. Seeing Noah's reaction, Jessica felt slightly regretful as well, knowing that the mere mention of that bastard's name was enough to ruin their peaceful moment. However, she needed to know. She wanted to know if everything was truly all right now. She threw Noah an apologetic smile and shrugged her bare shoulders, hoping he would understand the reason she needed to ask that necessary question. Thankfully, Noah willingly spoke after a few moments. He told her everything that happened last night, how he kidnapped Tristan and forced him to give up his rights and shares in the Williams Company. He also revealed to her that he used scandalous information that Ethan gave him to blackmail Tristan. Jessica was surprised because she knew how the Flynns deal with things when it is related to business. They were extremely careful, and they could also be described as perfectionists. That was why the Flynns' records were as white as snow, up until now at least, despite all the dirty things they've been doing in the shadows. But then again, Jessica understood that there was no way any human could hide anything from a superior creature like Ethan. He would know anyone's deepest secret and use it against them. And even if he did not already know, it would be as easy as pie for him to find out all he needed to know. I threatened him to never cross paths with you or me or your parents ever again. But knowing him, he might continue his investigation. Noah continued. Investigation? He's trying to dig into my background and my relationship with Ethan. I threatened him to stop because, if he continues, Ethan will definitely deal with him. But it seems like he does not intend to heed any of my warnings. If he managed to find out something about the vampires, he'll die. Jessica was silent. The bastard was an awful monster. But she didn't wish for him to be killed. She was thinking that maybe in the future, he'll change or regret his actions. However... Noah was right. Knowing what kind of person Tristan was, it might already be too late and hopeless for him. A long sigh escaped Jessica's lips. Now that she was certain Tristan was no longer a threat in her life, Jessica felt relieved. But then, suddenly, another important thing popped into her head again. How about your family? She asked, wide-eyed, as she pulled away to look at him. 
Did they even know what you did? That you got married? Jessica trailed off as she covered her lips with her palm. She had forgotten that this man was a prince, a second in line to the throne of the whole vampire kingdom. Did they agree with Noah's decision to marry a human? Could it be that they don't even know? Seeing the odd expression on his face, Jessica stared at him intently before she sat up. She couldn't help but feel a little anxious because of the look in his eyes. Tell me, she whispered, and she saw hesitation in his body language as he sat up as well. I want to know everything, Noah. I'm your wife now, she urged again as her hand slipped around the nape of his neck. Did they even know that you married me? They knew, right? Everything's gonna be fine, right, Noah? She added a wavery smile on top of her already weak voice. Jessica didn't know why, but her heart began to feel something unpleasant. Noah stared into her eyes, feeling her warm touches, and despite his worry and hesitation, he could no longer withhold anything from her. He was worried to death about her reaction, but he knew she had the right to know everything as his wife. More so, she was intricately involved in it. Jessica, I'm... He paused, taking her hand and rubbed it softly against his cheek. They already knew. She should have let out a relieved sigh, but she didn't. For some reason, she couldn't. Especially when he said it in that tone. So she just looked at him, waiting for him to tell her more. My family is against it. But they could no longer do anything about it, so... He paused again, as he carefully watched her expressions. They exiled me. The shock was too much that Jessica couldn't even gasp. Utter disbelief simply filled her eyes. It's all right, love. Being exiled is not a big problem for me. The truth is, I personally think that it was the best course of action. Ethan gave me all the things he had left behind in this country, so... Why?! Why did they have to exile you? Y you're a prince! You're their family! Noah swallowed silently, seeing the look on Jessica's eyes. He could see she was hurting for him. Her eyes began to glimmer with tears threatening to fall. So he eased back onto the bed and drew her down into his warm embrace, giving comfort to both himself and her as well. Shh! He tightened his arms around her. Hush, my wife. It's all right. You are my family now. And yes, they exiled me, but they're still my family. And I honestly don't think I'm in exile at all. Because you are my home now, Jessica. Exile or not doesn't matter to me, as long as I'm with you. What he said made Jessica's heart feel so full. It was as if her heart would burst. She could hear his heart beat and she felt utterly moved. She should have known. The relationship was forbidden after all. Of course he must have had to sacrifice something huge in exchange. I love you, Jessica. Please know that I've never regretted anything, and I never will. He kissed her forehead, and Jessica cupped his face and planted her lips on his, transmitting with everything that she had, all the passion and love she felt for her husband, right at that moment. She made a silent vow deep within herself that she would love this man all her life. She would take care of him, please him, love him with everything she had. I love you too, my husband. Thank you for choosing me. I love you so much. Before they knew it, the couple were again entwined in another intense lovemaking session once again with Jessica being the one on top this time, as she rode her husband with an intensity she never had before. Not knowing that her beloved still withheld one more secret he had yet to reveal. The couple quickly went to sleep after their last round of intense exercise. When Jessica opened her eyes, it was already dark. She blinked and quietly rolled on the bed. But when she realized that she was the only one on the bed, she rose in panic looking around for Noah. Her eyes widened. She had always dreaded waking up when they slept together 
because in the few times that it had happened before, she always, always found out that he's already gone every time she wakes up. Jessica's heart hammered inside her, and she quickly climbed off the bed. Desperation and panic overwhelmed her as she scrambled out of the room to look for him. She wanted to call out his name, but her throat just would not seem to cooperate, and she could not find her voice. After running down the stairs as if the house were on fire, Jessica immediately reached the villa's living room. Her eyes searched around, and when she couldn't find him inside, her eyes flew towards the entrance door. She was about to rush out the door when a delicious aroma wafted over and tickled her nostrils. That made her heart halt in her mad dash immediately as she whipped her body towards the source of the scent. Her eyes widened as she recognized and ran towards the door that she knew leads to the dining room. She stood just inside the door, frozen, as she stood there staring at Noah, who was standing right there, preparing something on the table. The next second, she ran to him and slammed into him, hugging him as tightly as she could from behind. Noah had sensed her presence just a while ago, but he was surprised at her sudden actions and the tightness of her arms around him. He could also sense the fear emanating from her trembling body. Are you okay? What's wrong? Did you have a nightmare? He asked, worried, as he turned to face her. Jessica shook her head and just buried her face on his hard chest, breathing in his unique scent that helped her calm her overstrung nerves. I thought you were gone again. I was so scared when I woke up alone in the bed, she confessed, her voice tight and emotional. His hands landed on her head and back, and he stroked her gently. I'm sorry for scaring you, he uttered, and he cupped her face to make her look at him. I'm here. I will never leave you again. I'm your husband, and you're my home now, Jessica. What he said made Jessica's body finally relaxed, and she kissed him. That was right. This man was hers now. Completely hers now. Noah sighed in relief when he could feel Jessica's body relaxing in his arms, and her expression became better. He then made her sit and paused at the realization that his wife was wearing nothing but his shirt that he made her put on after cleaning her body. He cleared his throat and reddened before he quickly stood and brought his attention back to feeding her, knowing that she was exhausted and hungry. While the two of them enjoyed their dinner, Jessica took pleasure in watching him, eating with him. She couldn't help but smile because of the near-magical atmosphere that his presence had created for her. After their pleasant dinner, Jessica found herself sitting on Noah's lap. As she watched him a while ago, Jessica was entertaining the thoughts on how her husband was such a wicked appetizer. While watching him eat made Jessica think of one thing the whole time. When did eating become intimate? She scolded herself for being so naughty and tried reining in her cravings, but in the end, she just couldn't go against her desires. With her legs parted and straddling him, Jessica naughtily ran her fingers through his thick hair. When we return, what do you want to do? She asked him a serious question, despite feeling his hardness already hitting her down there. Noah, who hadn't resisted or protested with all his wife's naughtiness, tilted his head. Continue doing my duties as your husband, of course. He smiled, and Jessica smiled wide as she snickered at his response. How about you? I'll do my duty as your wife, of course. The two of them chuckled and kissed each other, and passion filled the atmosphere again. But Noah broke the kiss just as Jessica was beginning to rub herself against him. Jessica scrunched her brows in confusion. Shall we go for a walk? Noah asked, causing Jessica to blink. But then, she ground downwards on him with increasing demand, making him groan, and then smiled innocently as she pulled away again. Jessica, easy, my wife, he urged in amusement. What, you're tired? Or you've had enough of me already? The naughty vixen licked her lips sexily, 
and Noah nearly stood and swept all the plates on the table aside to devour her right then and there. But he held himself back with an iron will and pinched her cheek instead. Do I look like I've had enough of you? Hmm. Jessica acted like she was thinking. And then, with a wicked smile, she circled her buttocks as if to provoke the raging beast that had been so eager for a while now. At least this beast down there knows explicitly well it still hasn't had enough. He nodded shamelessly. Then why are you trying to stop me? Jessica raised a brow. Because I need to tell you something important first. When his expression became grave, Jessica blinked and stopped grinding herself on him, her eyes now filled with curiosity. Okay. Her voice was no longer erotic. But afterwards, it's back to bed, mister. Noah chuckled in amusement and desire. Yes, we can do it till morning if you want. That's not a bad idea. She agreed with a smug smile and then laughed again. Noah grabbed his robe and with Jessica in his arms, he leapt with her and landed on the beach. Wear this. I can't let you catch a cold. Noah attempted to drape the robe around her, but Jessica protested. But it's not cold. Are you sure? Yes, my love. It's not cold. You're the cold one, so you wear it instead. Jessica said sarcastically, and she draped the robe on him. Afterwards, Jessica faced him and looked deeply into his eyes. So, what is it? She asked. Noah stared back at her, and after a short moment of silence, he took her hand and led her close to the water. Small waves lapped at their bare feet as they walked hand in hand along the shoreline. They stopped and looked at the softly shining moonlight. The world was so quiet and tranquil at that moment. It felt like they were the only ones in the world. This place was truly a paradise for them. Feeling Noah's grip tightening on her hand, Jessica dragged her gaze away from the moon and looked at her husband. He looked so handsome with his disheveled hair, and she couldn't help but tiptoe to land a deep kiss on his lips. They kissed passionately for a long time as the waves crashed at their feet and the moonlight caressed their skin. She could hear his heartbeat and the love in his kisses and touches. When their lips parted, Jessica caught his face and bumped her forehead against his lightly. Would you... Would you still love me? Even when I grow old and gray? Her question seemed to not only surprise Noah, but Jessica herself as well. She had thought about this issue multiple times before, but she never thought she would ask him this. The fire between them was quickly extinguished by that single question, and the magic seemed to have ended, and they were now back to the real world. Noah's hands curled along her jawline and rested below her ears, as he stared into her eyes. And Jessica didn't know why, but the look in his eyes made her heart suddenly feel suffocated. Jessica, you don't have to worry about that anymore, he said in a careful voice. That? About getting old and gray. She creased her brows. Confusion hit her. Why wouldn't she worry? Could it be that he's planning to turn her into a vampire? Wait. Jessica shook her head and berated herself. She already knows that vampires aren't like the undead creatures in movies. So turning a human into a vampire is impossible if you're not born as one. Seeing the confusion in her eyes, Noah swallowed. Jessica, I can grow old with you now. What? What do you mean? Jessica's heartbeat began to speed up in turmoil. You're a vampire. Of course you won't grow old with me. You can't. I... My lifespan has been shortened to match a human's lifespan. He finally said quietly. Jessica shook her head slightly. Mm, I, I don't understand. Why? Why would your lifespan be shortened? Suddenly, Jessica remembered when she was in Nora and Oliver's mansion. She overheard the couple talking about something, and they mentioned the word sacrifice. When she approached them, they stopped, and Oliver had asked her if Noah had told her about what happened to him 
when he left her that night in Aranai. Now that Jessica thought about it, she remembered Noah coughing out blood back then, as if he was hurt. She remembered his darkened eyes, and she began to feel even more suffocated. Listen. Noah struggled to stay calm, but he held her so gently, but possessively, and finally, he started to tell her everything. His eyes were wary and nervous as he told her what had happened to him and about the self-destruction. Once she knew the whole story, Noah's heartbeat was beating loudly, mainly because of the reaction he was seeing on Jessica's face. He had never seen her look so devastated before, and it pained him and scared him seeing her like this. Rigid and trembling, Jessica stared into his eyes, until she was drowning in darkness. Why? She didn't know? Why? How could he sacrifice his life for her like that? How could he? Jessica wasn't aware that she was crying until she felt like she could no longer breathe. Her knees weakened, and she struggled to break free from him. But Noah didn't let go and just pulled her into his embrace. She could only weep, asking him why, over and over, like a broken record. She thought they won against the world, but she was wrong. Noah had sacrificed literally everything, even his life, for her. Why? <laughs> why? She asked while crying, as Noah held her even tighter, trying his very best to soothe her pain. When she didn't stop weeping, Noah kissed her desperately, ravaging her mouth with a wildness that made her quiver, forcing her to stop her agonizing weeping. When their lips parted, both of them were breathless. Listen, Jessica. His chest rose and fell in a long, deep breath as he held her face, his expression extremely grave. When you left the kingdom that day, I thought I would go mad. I was there at the airport, watching you from afar. I was hurt and weak, and yet I felt like I'm going to die if I don't see you. I told myself, that was the last time I'll see you. But when you were really gone, he paused, his eyes glimmering with overflowing emotions. When you were gone, everything turned dark for me. I tried to forget you. I really, really tried. But I couldn't. It was impossible. There was no place I could go to feel better. No person I wanted to be with. I began to hate myself. Hate my heart for beating for you alone. I came to hate everything. And even ended up hating you for being a human. I was miserable. In the end, I couldn't take it anymore. And I found myself crawling back to you. Using every excuse I could think about. When we did it, and I found out what had happened, and that I can no longer live long... Did you know what I felt? He smiled bitterly. I was happy, Jessica. There was never even a single iota or hint of regret. Nothing at all. I will never regret, Jessica. Because this is what I wanted. I wanted to live with you. Spend the remaining time of my life with you. Then grow old and die with you. He was breathing hard after saying all those words fully expressing his deepest feelings, and Jessica could only tear up as she listened to him. She was guilty, and yet she was happy and thrilled to be loved by someone this way. To be loved so strongly, more than his own life. Hearing all his words made Jessica realize that if she were in his shoes, she would have done the same and felt the same. She would rather trade everything even her own life, to be with him.